What do you think about the comments Jordan Peterson made about your debate? In a way, I get kind of the worst of multiple worlds where I'm not going as hard as I'd like to, but then I don't even get the... Not, it's not even respect I'm looking for here. It's like the opposite of respect. It's like, oh, he's nice to me. I'm not getting that either. So that's, it's, I can't have both. Like, if you're gonna think that I'm mean, what's your dream guest to have on the show? I want to connect with goddamn Sam Harris, okay? It will happen eventually. That, I think he's the guy that I'm... Did you see the trigonometry guy uh, praise you for leaving the left? It seems like a good time to do a little grifting. Uh, I will never grift. And I did see that post earlier and I was probably gonna respond to it. Uh, the, the only reason why I'm abandoning progressives is because I think, I don't think progressives are just, I don't think they have good principles, but I'm still like a center left to far left person. I just, yeah, there's no intellectual dark web or any cuck shit like that over here. F that I'll never be one of those people unless they convince me, I guess, unless I see something that changes my mind on a whole bunch of things. Do you keep yourself from becoming a Trump cuck like many other ex leftists? Um, I'm usually really good at, uh, evaluating once I've had like a day or two off of something. Uh, like I definitely can be emotionally driven in the moment. I can be very emotionally driven in the moment. But then once I've had like a day or two of separation, um, I'll deliberately look back and I'll be like, okay, well, what's going on here? Uh, so that I don't get pushed too far or pushed at all by people that I don't like or, or have respect for. Uh, I'm pretty good at that. I think I'm exceptionally good at that actually. What do you see is your most right-leaning opinion? Um, I don't know, probably firearms or something, or maybe freedom of speech, I'm not sure. What do you think about the comments G Jordan Peterson made about your debate? Um, I'm not sure, I don't know. But I thought it ended well, you and Destiny. Yeah? Yeah, you know? because you even said, like, hey, we're getting everything out here. We're trying to we're trying to come to something, and sometimes you have to be a little unruly in how you yeah, seek it well, out you know, orally, you know? The problem with the, I, I found that likely the most I had the most qualms about that podcast of any podcast I've yeah. done. Well, the reason is, is, see, I learned this when I was like 24. I learned that I had a proclivity to battle verbally to be right. Okay. Right. And that was a status thing. Mm -hmm. I'm right. You're wrong. So, you mm -hmm. know, that redounds to my credit. Uh -huh. I use my verbal intelligence as a weapon of dominance. Well, I, I stopped doing that when I was like 23. I thought, oh, that's not, that's not. That's the prideful worship of the Luciferian intellect. It's a really bad idea. Like, mm -hmm. seriously. It's a seriously bad idea. And so I don't like talking to people who want to be right. And destiny wants to be right. Mm. And so I found it... It was out of my bailiwick, because I usually talk to people who want to talk. Yeah. Right? And I can disagree with them. I disagree with Russell Brand about lots of things. We get mm -hmm. along just fine. Yeah. Right? And the reason for that is that Russell talks. And listens. Yeah. You know, he isn't hitting me with a hammer trying to be right. Yeah. And so I don't like those arguments. Mm -hmm. I don't like arguments. No. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to revisit, I, I have to like critically revisit my rhetoric. Did the trigonometry thing come out yet? I, I, need, I need to figure out in real life conversations like what the best way to draw concessions or have conversations with people are. Because I'm not happy now with, um, for, for Jordan Peterson and for Candace Owens, uh, I was incredibly gentle. Very, 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 very gentle. And they both still got ass mad. So I end up, in a way I get kind of the worst of multiple worlds where I'm not going as hard as I'd like to, but then I don't even get the, not, it's not even respect I'm looking for here. It's like the opposite of respect. It's like, oh, he's nice to me. I'm not getting that either. So that's, it's, I can't have both. Like, if you're going to think that I'm mean, then I want to be mean, you know? I want to go way harder, but. Can you take this, bro? Mensa IQ challenge. I don't like the online IQ test because they all cap out at 180. So I max them all, you know? And I'm like, well, what's the point of this? You know, if I can't see my true 220 plus IQ.
Sam Cedar, who sucks, says he doesn't get invited to those shows because he intends to go too hard. Is there even a middle ground with those bad faith people like Candace? There's a difference between going too hard. Sam Cedar doesn't get invited. I think that Sam Cedar and the um, people like that don't get invited because it's not even that they go too hard. It's that they also fundamentally don't understand or don't care to understand um, those points of view at all. Like, I've got the understanding of the point of view. I've got that down pat 100%. It's not even... Like that, I can, that I'm exceedingly good at. It's conveying some level of understanding, compassion, and empathy during a conversation while also providing critical pushback. That's like the difficult balance. Um, for the other people, like the Sam Cedars of the world, they don't care to do, they're not trying to do that in their head because they don't have any understanding of why the other people feel the way they do. Maybe Sam does. If he does, he just doesn't say it much. Can you start the Bridges YouTube page out? It looks messy. Um, oh yeah, I haven't. Um, let's see. Yeah, probably. That's the next thing I'll I'll look at. I'm just making sure that the syndication on everything right now is good for the Podbean stuff, and then I'm gonna throw up. We have every episode ready to go. I'm just gonna like launch publish on all of them. I've spent like probably literally like 20 hours <laughs> over the past like three days like doing accounts and everything on website and making sure everything is working on on everything. But for the most part, I think it is. Um, let's see, what else do we need to do if I leave today? Okay, this, this, this. I had to fight really hard to cancel my, I wanted to cancel two of my chase cards today. It was really hard. Um, I need to do this today before I leave. And then this is a medium term thing. Okay. Don't know if you saw, but I just watched Asin Gold's video about Hassan saying cracker isn't a racial slur. Isn't racism racism? Um kind of, yeah. Um Racism is experienced in different ways by different people and different power structures can create different types of racism. Like as a white person in the United States, you'll never experience the same type of structural or systemic racism as a black person will. But on an individual level, you can experience racism of all sorts of varying degrees that could be worse um, than some of the structural or systemic stuff. Um, structural and systemic racism is a very weak form of racism. Like it's pervasive and it's everywhere on a large scale and it can impact everything, but the impact on an individual could be quite weak. Like, um, I would say that like uh, individual racism is like the strong nuclear force and um, and systemic racism is like gravity, um, which I think is the weakest of the four. Do we even use fundamental forces anymore? Or has that all been subsumed by quantum mechanics? It's probably all been subsumed by quantum physics, but whatever, for my classical bros out there. Um, if somebody's individually racist to you, somebody walks up to you, calls you a racial slur, tries to lynch you, kill you, whatever, that's like a very strong individual personal form of racism. Um, but it's like way un very unique to situations. But the, the um, systemic or structural racism is way more everywhere. It's like gravity, like every single atom is pulling on every single atom and it's out there and it's everywhere, but it can be harder to see or feel sometimes basically. What would be an example of systemic racism a black person might experience today in the United States? I feel like I feel like the majority of the racism is going to be like vestiges of the past. So, for instance, like the idea that you don't have much money or you live in certain neighborhoods that are predisposed towards certain like types of crime or lack of economic opportunity. Um, those types of things are, are a lot of those are going to be uh, reverbs from the past. Reverbs, echoes. Can a reverb be a a reverb or an echo? Would you say echoes from the past? Saw that you went to some Palestine and Israel protests in the past. Will you be going um, to more, or do you think you'll just be censored like last time? Um, doing stuff like that in real life would actually be a lot of fun. That was fun. I do enjoy. I need to talk to like more real people, but I also like, um, especially once I come back from this Vegas thing, and then after as the Israel Palestine trip, I just have to balance out my projects. Um, we're trying to watch like compilations of like Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 and like I'm trying to like 
okay, I, at every single point of the day when I wake up, I need to like do this and that and that and that and that and that and that. I need to be, I, when I'm more efficient with my time, I, I can actually do more. I can do more. Um, I just need to be more efficient with my time. Before I was thinking like, oh, I'm trying to do too much, but I think I just I need to be more efficient with my time. But also whatever I do, I have to chunk out like a good, at least like six to eight hours for streaming. Cause I think the streaming thing is like one of the most important things I do. I think it's a big key to my success. It's cause I'm always able to keep rolling forward through dramas and through events. And like, there's always like stuff that kind of gets me relevant into people's eyes and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I'm also like, now that I'm doing two podcasts, I have to balance my time out better. For, um, for Bridges, I'm moving that to noon. So that one of the bad things right now is that Bridges is at a time slot that literally anally rapes my entire day. Like three to six is so rough because I can't really start streaming at one. Am I going to stream from one to two thirty and then go down and then stream from like six thirty to nine? Like it just it's like really shitty. So I'm trying to move Bridges, or I am moving Bridges from. I think I told Eric if we can move it up to eleven, that'd be the best because then I can do Bridges from eleven to. Um, 11 to 1 or 11 to 2 and then I can come stream at least like six hours that day that's good and then anything else can start at 8 and I can do that from or no 7 7 to 10 or 7 to 9 I'm also trying to scale back a little bit on the time for the shows I think my show should be around two hours um, people trying to do like every podcast being like three plus hours is a lot I don't mind doing it if, there's, if it's organically like a really good convo and it's moving along really well but um, trying to force everything to be three hours is a long time is a lot you proud of DGG rallying behind you with the edit to further the regime? Um, yeah, the fuck. Now I feel like I've missed an opportunity for a long time. Um, uh, the Twitter community thing has been phenomenally powerful, I think. I'm assuming that a lot of the activity is as a result of that. I just don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't use Twitter that much. Um, or, or like, I, I don't know when I say that, it makes sense. I don't really know how anything works on this website. <laughs> like, I go to my home and then I, I, I'll kind of see tweets sometimes, but I don't know how like communities work. I don't know much about spaces. Like I just don't really know much about how like Twitter and all this shit works. Um, so I just don't use it much. So I kind of assume that like that was the same for everybody else. But the, um, it seems like the community stuff is popping. Holy shit. Do you think sometimes people get confused on what you say or mean because of generalizations? It's something I've been thinking about like with the economy, it's in a good place, but maybe some compies make bad decisions have fuck shit so folks think when you say it's all good they take it as they take it as nothing bad is happening sorry if it didn't articulate as well i don't know their entire black sea coast is warm um i know that there is a big port in crimea in sevastopol um i don't know what else they have easy access to um i don't isn't sevastopol the only easy access they have um, because it, I thought that was why it was such a big deal. I mean, I, you would think that they, I guess, would have ports here or whatever, right? I guess. But I thought the Sevastopol port was a really, really, really big deal, right? Um, people are saying Kaliningrad or Kaliningrad. Maybe this is? I, I don't know. Don't you think you'll be noticed more and more in these protests and people will refrain from talking to you because they are scared, for lack of a better term? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty nice in my real-life conversations. I think I'm very nice. Like, if you listen to my real-life talks with any of those kids, I'm not, like, being combative or crazy at all. Is your alopecia completely gone now? No, it's still, like, a little patchy. I think I probably just need, like, one more round of shots. I'll be good. Because you can see, like, this is what it should look like. And then... It's a lot of it has come back, but there's still like areas a little bit. Although the guy said it would take like six treatments to get it to come back, and I only did one, so hopefully that bodes well. But the doctor had immaculate vibes, so I think that helped as well. Kaliningrad isn't a warm water port; it's in the Baltic Sea, brother. Oh well, fuck chat then, I guess. But I also, I don't know, like, what, I don't know if you can have, like, a, like, is it possible that this could be a warm water port because of, um, like, air currents or whatever? I truly have no idea. Did you go to Dr. Avi or do you not trust Jewish doctors? No, remember my Dr. Avi, that trip got canceled. Minox slash Finest helped me on that shit for life, um, if you do it, though. Well, I think for Minoxidil or finesterone or whatever that's if you have like um if you begin to have a receding hairline i think that you can do those drugs to keep those um to keep those 
uh, hair follicles working, I think. I don't remember why. I don't remember what causes a receding hairline. For uh, alopecia areata, the spotty baldness, that's an autoimmune thing. So like for my stuff, like it happened once, the follicles die, and then you just hope they're not like permanently killed and that your immune system isn't continually attacking them. And then when it stops, eventually it grows back. It just takes a while for your immune system to stop being gay, I guess. Um, and that's part of what the steroid injections are supposed to help for is because it like hurts the immune system a little bit. I, I, right? I think steroid, localized steroid injections will kind of dam damper the immune system in the area, and then it gives your hair follicles a chance to come back. And then when they're back enough, the immune system looks at them and they're like, oh, well. Somebody said, MD here, it's DHT, minoxidil, and finasteride inhibit conversion of testosterone to DHT. Okay. It's for alopecia universalis. Um, that's if you're bald over your entire fucking bottle or body, right? It's universal, right? Yeah. You look like the guy from Dune too. <laughs> Wrong. Minoxidil doesn't do that. I didn't say minoxidil did that. I said that local steroids injection, steroid injections do. I think your Instagram is another missed opportunity. Um, you should be taking pictures with Bridges guests and posting to your story. Yeah, I know. I need to do that. Why do you think people, without doing research in the Israel-Palestine stuff, tend to see more to Palestine since for a long time online Jews are very protected? I think that one email like really flipped my brain on that. Jews were only protected online by progressives because progressives are very anti-white supremacists, not because they actually care about Jewish people at all. They're just very, very anti-white supremacy, which kind of makes sense if you go back and think about it because they weren't really like talking much about Jewish shit. They were just talking about like Nazis. Also, if you look, if you just glance at Israel-Palestine, it's very easy to look at the conflict and think like, wow, like it seems pretty f if you're Palestinian. You can find old videos of me talking about it. It's like, okay, well, regardless of whatever justifications Israel uses, it probably doesn't feel good to have all your shit getting bombed all the time when you're this little itty-bitty dude getting bullied by this country next to you. But Also, I feel like if you posted some non-combative shit on Twitter and some nice pics on Instagram, once in a while, it would reduce the toxicity that's permanently around you, in my opinion. Uh, maybe, actually. Maybe, actually. Vivance causes hair to fall out. The androgenic gen effect slash vasoconstriction and ca can cause alopecia. I had a similar thing happen to me when I started. Have you noticed your hair falling out more? Um, none of that is true. Um, anytime people start, um, th this is all I'll say if you wanna do like stuff relating to medical research, like here's the stuff that you need to watch out for. I'm gonna give you an incredibly generalized take, uh, so be careful with this. Uh, giving you an incredibly generalized take, so be careful with this. Anytime somebody tries to tell you that a drug or a diet or a thing does a particular thing, and they start giving you like a very particularized causal chain, like, oh, DHT causes this and that and that, so you should blah, 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 right? Medicine, health, diet, biology, all of this stuff like works with all these other systems. The idea that like one thing absolutely causes a thing or blah, 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 if it's true, make them point to like a study looking at the thing. If they don't have a study, I just wouldn't trust it. Um, that's just me because a lot of people make like very individual claims about like causal pathways in the body or patho uh, patho physiology path pathophysiological pathophysiology the 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 course of a disease through a body patho anyways yeah if there's if a thing causes a thing look for a study for the thing okay so like if somebody's gonna say like amphetamines cause your hair to fall out well then just like look at study or whatever. Also, people people tried to guess that my um, when I started Vivance that caused my alopecia thing, but that this happened before I ever got a prescription for Vivance, so no. Is it a myth that you can recede your hairline by styling or tying it super tightly? I think you can. I think if you pull your hair back a lot, I think you can cause hair to fall out or get like f up here, but I don't think it causes the receding hairline. I don't know much about like male pattern baldness or all of that because I just haven't read that much about it. I only know a little bit about the um, the what this this autoimmune thing, the alopecia areata. Or there's a name for the beard one, but it's all, it's the same shit. But um, I my understanding, I believe, is that when it comes to male pattern baldness, it's like that's genetic, and that's it. That I don't know if like I don't think like stress or diet or sleep. I don't know if anything else affects that. I could be wrong, but I don't. I don't. Just from the very glancing readings, it didn't seem like there was strong proof for anything impacting male pattern baldness aside from genetics. Some people just get really fucked. Um, fuck, because if you click one subreddit post on your Reddit app, like a billion things start coming up from that subreddit. So I clicked one for the male 
for hair loss or something. And I see these guys that are like 17 who have these like, are they called widow's peaks? They go like back all the way. And I'm like, oh shit, that's so brutal. But when you ask uh, people why they are concerned with Palestine over any of the random conflicts, they will say, because it's my tax dollars funding it. What is a good counter to that? Um, I just don't really believe it. Like if you ask them about it, like, okay, well, if the United States stopped funding Israel-Palestine, would you stop caring about it? That just seems really hard to believe. Were you surprised how easily the Twitch streamer click backed off once you went unhinged? Did they? I feel like everybody liked their shit and got their stuff in. Why do you think the conflict specifically has turned many young people uh, to single-issue voters? Uh, of all the issues in foreign conflicts, why is this one so special? Uh, I've already said this like a million times. It's just a, it's a good intersection between a lot of different things that young people care about. What are your thoughts on that dude saying some wild things to that girl on Valorant? I don't know. If they were really wild, he probably shouldn't have said them. Why are, more, why are people more mad about Hamas slash Israel than Ukraine when it's less significant and less clear cut than the latter? The moral outrage seems mismatched compared to realities on the ground. Sure, but I mean, that's how it goes. The Bridges podcast was really good. Yeah, that RA the Recommend. man. That was a cool, that was an interesting guy to chat with for sure. I wish I would have, man, I just, I've just been, I do, I've been so busy the past few days. I wish I would have had more time because I, after the show, I started looking at, um, uh, I started going through some of his music on YouTube and now I really wish I would have, um, I wish I would have uh, listened to and watched because I could have asked him more specific questions. Um, I looked up that, the Vietnam song that he did and everything. Yeah, I, I think I would have had better questions for him, but it was, uh, it was fun to chat with regardless. It is very interesting. It's a little diva-ish, but it's very interesting like how much of a crossover there is between careers in music, careers in influencer land and YouTube, careers in um, acting. Like, There's so many of the same problems. It's so funny listening to him. Like, yeah, when I was 18, I was unhinged, but then I like I figured my shit out and I calmed down. And yeah, like people were trying to f*** you in the industry early on when we didn't know what was going on. It's like, yeah, all of this shit happens. Yeah. Is there anything new about your debate with Hassan and Pierce Morgan? No, I'm pretty sure Hassan shot that down. Do you think people choose deliberately divisive topics to obsess over online? Like, do you think the Israel-Palestine stuff being controversial makes it more attractive as a thing for a young person to base their whole identity around? Maybe, but I mean, think about it. Like, divisive stuff is always going to be more... It's by definition, it's divisive. Like, there's not going to be huge movements online being like, we need to say that it's not okay to have sex with kids. Like, yeah, obviously, everybody knows that. It's not... We need to, we need to take a strong stance against murder. We need to take a strong stance against mugging people in this. Yeah, obviously. Nobody disagrees. You're not going to have a, a, why would you unite around this? Like nobody cares. Or, or it's not that nobody cares. Like everybody's basically on one side for that, right? Unless you're a libertarian. Do you sleep on flights or read? I'm working on my iPad usually. Usually it's just all my working with and compiling on my notes stuff. One of the Reddit mods made a comment saying that the sub was being brigaded again. So much so that admins reached out to help. Is that true? For my sub, maybe. We get brigaded pretty often. I saw that Kethel's <laughs> unfriended me. I don't know unfriended, but or she just, apparently she's on that Zionism kick, but whatever. I don't give a fuck. Well, do you have Knox Hill on Bridges? He was a semi-pro slash pro soccer player with his rap and rap breakdowns. Maybe. The, the people we're trying to focus on is I want pretty large figures. I am cloud hungry for my show. Um, or people that can have really good conversations or people that are very much within my sphere of stuff that I'm working on. Um, this channel is so kind of messy in terms of like what's been uploaded and what hasn't been uploaded. Jesus, it's very messy. Well, I'll have this figured out in a couple of days. Um, I'm trying to think of who. The first one we had was Jeremiah Johnson. That was kind of like a warm up on everything. He seemed like an okay guy. Um, not like exceptionally entertaining, but like kind of in our wheelhouse. But that was okay. Um, episode two was Ryan Macbeth is a very good conversationalist. Uh, he's large on YouTube and he covers um, something that's within my wheelhouse. Ryan Macbeth would be like the golden trifecta um, invite. The Krasenstein twins were another really good invite. In my wheelhouse, good conversationalists, um, decently large size, at least on Twitter. Uh, JJ was a really good person. Um, I don't know if, he's pretty big on YouTube, isn't he? JJ McCullough. I don't know how to say or pronounce this fucker's name. Yeah, million subs, good conversationalist in my wheelhouse. JJ, what was next? Adam was good. Um, a little bit outside of my wheelhouse because it was movies, but still decent guy to talk to. 
good size. Richard Lewis was fun to chat with. A little outside, a little inside. I guess personally, we've got the history there. Tom was fun to talk with. Um, Tom is a really interesting guy. He's very mature for his age. Um, he's figured a lot of shit out for being 21 years old, and he's like pretty. Um, he's got a good, like, grasp on trying to stay humble and not like go way over the edge, which I, I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine being that young and making like making it that far. He's he's got really good self corrective uh, patterns, I guess. Yeah. Um, Turkey Tom, Chris Cappy. That was a I didn't I had no idea who that was. Erudite has either gotten really fucking lucky or she's got a good mind for people to invite. The Chris Cappy I had no clue who that guy was. That guy was a real he was a good conversationalist, super interesting. Kind of in my wheelhouse, yeah, for the weapons of the military and everything. No, absolutely my wheelhouse, yeah. And also large channel, yeah. And then Rugged Man yesterday, that was super random. Um I wish we would have known a little bit more. I should have spent time uh, Kyla did all the research and, and had written up like a document on stuff. I didn't have time to read it. Um, he was a really good conversationalist, though. Fun to chat with. Yeah. 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 These guys have all been good. I've all been really good so far. Is there like a unified point of this podcast? I remember ages ago you wanted to do a podcast. We interviewed experts on space. Um, right now, I think the large, like the very broad macro goal is just bring on people and have like interesting in-depth conversations that wouldn't really be appropriate for a stream format. Like, I don't know for some of these guys about like, hey, Ryan, do you want to come on and chat for two or three hours? Like on my live stream, it just feels a little weird doing it on live stream. It doesn't feel as appropriate. And, um, and there's also a different energy in person too. Like when you have somebody in person. We would ask you to something about pop culture thing. Oh yeah, because yeah, anytime he's like, oh, was it? And I'm like, bro, if you're looking at me for questions on pop culture because you're forgetting something, I'm never going to be able to yeah, answer the question. I have no idea. What do you think is the timeline for you starting your own media company? I don't know. Within like, hopefully, like moving in that direction within three years. Having the podcast going was like the biggest first step, though. Like getting the foundation for this was probably the hardest thing. You should invite Ayla on. I think she's invited. I think. You and JJ had very good chemistry together. You should do more things together. Yeah, maybe, yeah. JJ was really good because um, it's very fun to have people who you can disagree with and then explore those disagreements with. That's one of the things I like about Pisco the most. There was more depth to RA, the rugged man. You should have watched his interview with Gavin McInnes. Yeah, I just don't... I, it's really hard for me to dig a lot when I don't have a good understanding of the person because I, I don't know how far I can go or push. Like, I was already like asking questions about his dad or his family that was already like hitting the edges of what I was comfortable with because I, um, I just don't know him as well. So ask your producers, to put together a brief one page thing with links for more depth to go into if you want. Yeah. Kyle already does that. She's done that with everything. So <sighs> Hamas offered to release all civilian hostages on October 9th. Israel refused. This was never about the hostages. We later found out that Hamas had offered on October 9th or 10th to release all the civilian hostages in exchange for the idea of not entering the strip. The government rejected the offer. This is, not this is the least surprising thing in the world. What do you mean? You hop across the border, you kill 1,200 people, and as long as you take 200 hostages back, you can release them back in and there'll be no retaliation? That's wild. What are you talking about? Would you have Denims in your Bridges episode? She's very pretty and smart. Denims is probably one of the worst people I've ever interacted with in terms of like moral character. She's definitely on the lowest. Are you still out of the gym? Uh, listen. <laughs> I haven't in a couple weeks. I just work a lot. My schedule, okay? What do you want me to do? What's your dream guest to have on the show? I want to connect with goddamn Sam Harris, okay? It will happen eventually. That, I think he's the guy that I'm the most interested in chatting with right now. I think over any, like more than Joe Rogan. Like I, I just want to have like a five hour talk with, um, I want to have a five hour chat with Sam Harris just about like his whole journey through politics and everything. Cause I feel like it mirrors mine in some ways. Hey, our Destiny Mods. I'm an admin whose job it is to detect subreddits who might need some assistance to receiving this message because it looks like you've received more traffic than normal. If your team is feeling overwhelmed, we have some resources that might help. Cute. Oh, I will be rewriting. Um, I'm going to do a personal rewrite of the subreddit rules. Um, we're going to start to get real, real, real strict on some things. Um, also, I think we have the... Um, I'm just going to spoiler alert this a little bit. I'm sorry, Fourth Thought, I love you. Um, we have the, uh, I think we've got the mass unbanned reloaded. We're just waiting for Israel to pull out of got the Gaza Strip, and then we'll do it at the same time. So it'll be a nice, a nice big old meme, okay? Um, 
I think on the, I think for the subreddit for general thoughts, I think I'm going to have, I think I'm going to enforce, I'm trying to, I don't know how autistic I'm going to be about this, but I really, 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 really want to enforce sourcing on every single thing that's said. So like if somebody makes, let's see if I can find an example of this. Um, it, it would be something, so like for this, like you need to have a link to the original tweet if you're posting screenshots ever. Can you do that? Can you do like an image plus text underneath? Like this should have a link to the original tweet beneath it, stuff like that. Um, I think that like this, if it says today, I want like a date and a time. I don't think we would link to discords because it's probably anti-brigading. Um, for some of the news stories for like the Israel-Palestine shit, like it'll get linked. Like I want links to the original articles or when people say things uh, that other people have said, oh, remember when Ludwig or Hassan said this? I want links to like those VODs. I think I want to enforce that a lot more here just because, um, yeah. You need to teach them uh, that it is possible to criticize you even harshly without being so fucking soy about it. Um, yeah, one thing I need to do, um, I should go over bans that I do because if I show people what I ban for, then it also trains people to post better. But there are also times where I'm just like really ass mad for a day and I'll just start banning everybody. But then I usually just unban people when they, like after every mass banning, that's usually when I poke forth that I'm like, listen, we need to do the mass unban because I just banned like 100 people. I think there have been times where I've told him and then he looks at the mod logs and he's like, oh, I see why you're saying this. <laughs> are there going to be rules in place for a moderate stance on the IP conflict? So much of this sub is completely one-sided and a permanent down votes, even the slightest rebuttal. <sighs> there's like, there's a, there's like a weird dynamic that I've noticed happening um, there's a lot of factors that have to be balanced. So here's a couple of things that have to be kept in mind. So one, we don't have to be balanced on everything. I don't want to be balanced on everything. Um, like, let's say that a story comes out and one man went into a school and he killed 20 children, okay? And he wrote a full manifesto before going in saying, I'm killing all these children because I think that the world needs less population. I don't need to have like an equivalent two sides on that issue. Like, okay, well, hold on. Like, don't just call this guy a monster, blah, 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 right? I'm not interested in that kind of fair and balanced where we pretend that every single issue has equal credibility on both sides. It's not, I'm not interested in that. Um, so for like Israel-Palestine, obviously I fall more on the Israel side than I fall on the Palestine side, clearly. Um, however, there's an interesting dynamic that happens that I don't know how to counter this. I wish you guys could just not be so fucking soy. So here's like, here, this is the issue. The issue will be that the majority of my subreddit is also pro-Israel because of me, because of other Israeli people that have shown up, right? So these people will be pro-Israel, which I'm not necessarily opposed to as long as everything is being sourced and, and discussed correctly. But then what'll happen is, is when a pro-Palestinian thing comes up, there's two things that happen. One is it's usually a really big event because if, because generally my sub leans pro Israel, so usually it'll be a really big event where Israel's done something really wrong or fucked up, or at least it appears to have. Two, it'll get brigaded from outside people that will come in wanting to shit on the pro Israeli subreddit. And then three, a thing happens in the community. I wish I could figure out a way to fight against this because it's, it's, it, this is like the source of all anti fan behavior too, not just in my community, but in all communities, where when people see a prevailing narrative, they really want to smugly take the other side. So it'll be like, huh. Oh, wow, an IDF soldier shot and killed five seven-year-old children? Hmm. How's the subreddit going to defend this one today, right? So it'll be a story where it's like, there's legitimately good criticism to be had of the Israeli side, but because it's an anti-Israeli post, even the organic posters that are in the subreddit will have like the highest smug posting ever. And then it's just like, well, this is dumb. And then it re, um, well, it invigorates and it like, I don't want to say radicalizes, but it basically, it invigorates the other side to, buy, to be like even more like unhinged. And then it just, you get into this weird death spiral and it's like, ugh, yeah, it's fucking annoying. It happens a lot with criticism of me too. Like it'll be kind of anti fanny behavior where I'll do something or say something stupid um, or wrong or incorrect. And it'll be like, huh, can't wait to see how everybody sycophantically defends this. Like, hmm, I accept the down votes, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say destiny was wrong here. 2,487 upvotes. First reply, can't wait for you to get banned in this circle jerk sub because you're such a brave truth poster. 1,472 upvotes. And it's like, okay, I get it. All right. <laughs> like, calm down. All right. Chill. Calm the fuck down. All right. You're, you're okay. Jesus Christ. All right. Thoughts on an IP daily discussion thread or something like that. I said a drama posting. It feels like half the posters IP news items daily. Yeah. So here's what I... 
Uh, so when you when you're making containment posts, the point of a containment post is that you want to contain all of the spam into one central area, but you're doing that because it's taking up space from something else, right? So my issue right now is I just there's just not much going on besides Israel Palestine in the news. There's just not much else going on. So if you contain that to a daily discussion thread to free up the board more, well, what are we talking about? Nothing's happening, right? Other than um, other, I guess there's like the Hassan Ludwig stuff that's been going on recently, but yeah. So I'm okay with it like rampaging now. If it got to the point to where like US news was moving on and there was other stuff going on and people were still spamming Israel Palestine, then I'd be like, okay, well, this is too much. But I just, I don't think right now there's anything going on. And when there was other news going on, it seems like the Israel Palestine stuff gets bumped down. So I'm okay with it for now. Yeah. Daily discussion threads kill subreddits that happen to hip hop heads. Yeah, I've noticed that. There was also, um, I checked out the, uh, is it fitness or gym? I think the fitness subreddit completely changed their posting to only daily threads. And this subreddit feels, su I don't know whoever posted this before I used it, but this subreddit just feels ultra dead now. It's all just like their once a day posts and that's it. And I, I don't like browsing subreddits like this. Like, okay, so I just click and I have to look at every individual post, fuck that. You know? Yeah, so I don't know if it's an effective way to regulate a subreddit. This means that sometimes you would make a post, not necessarily low effort, because I don't want to source everything. I might just not do it for fear of getting banned. You'd be discouraging posting too much, I think. That's fine. I'm okay discouraging that type of posting. Like, I like high-quality posts. That's good. What a forethought, Sarah Lee. If you just come down hard and publicly on what behavior is bad, they'll get their shit together. Like, podcast critique hasn't been retarded since my jihad started. Hasn't been retarded since my jihad started. Nice. That's a good, that's a nice line, Fourth Thought. You really are a witty lyricist. And by that, I mean African-American. Um, yeah, no, you're right. I need to talk more publicly. I'll, I'll write up, I'll, I'm going to I'll write up like an actual list of rules and I'll give examples and shit. I will do that. Yeah. So this post would not have been okay. How crazy these kinds of interactions from Destiny's point of view. He spends a ton of time on stream doing research, probably more than any other streamer that talks about this topic. Someone links him a clip of the slime person and a giant. Yeah, I think I would like, it'd be nice to just have this sourced, I think. It would just be nice, yeah. Oh, another thing that I'm gonna do, I've written this down, this is a medium term thing. I'll probably do this when I come back. I think something that would be nice to do, um, I don't know if I wanna do this once a week or at the beginning of every stream, and I don't know if I'd make a post in the suburb or not. Something that would be nice because we do, we do a lot of like reading and research here, but I need to find ways. Bean pod. Thanks for the five memberships. Wait, are you the subreddit hosting thing I use? Or is that pod bean? Is that just, does that just happen to be your name? I use pod bean. Weird. Okay. Um, something that would be nice, I think, is like, what is a question that you see pop up on social media all the time that we need like a better and more snappy retort to? Like a more snappy talking point towards... And I think that like once a week, I might just like write out a thing like, oh, if somebody brings this up, you should respond with this. I think that would be good stuff to do because it would help us like take our, the research and everything and distill it into a more weaponizable form. Mrs. Apostate, thanks to the 10 gifted Destiny memberships. Is our session your liberal the best subreddit? Do you want to emulate how they run things? Um, I don't know. I don't really look at that subreddit much. I haven't had time to, I don't consume any media. I don't consume anything right now, except for like my notes, I like working on my notes, my reading, and then my podcast stuff, um, and then my emails and messages, and then setting up my, um, uh, setting up whatever shows I'm going to, uh, and then doing everything downstairs related to the studio stuff. Um, and then, um, well, I just, yeah, like a million things, like ordering stuff for downstairs, and what did I do today? I went to the bank, I went to Chase today. It took me so long to cancel my two cards. Like I kept telling him I was gonna destroy my credit score. And I'm like, bro, my credit score is like 840. Cancel these fucking cards. And he's like, are you really sure? I did this once for somebody and their credit score dropped 40 points. And I'm like, that's, I'm okay. Cancel this fucking card. Jesus Christ, it took me like 30 minutes. The October 7th note is 2024, not 2023. Wait, what, did I have a wrong date somewhere? Oh, this is wrong, 2023. What did you learn about the setup over the last few days? Uh, I solidified a lot my understanding of like cameras, angles, how to shoot different things, um, just way more about like audio, what's appropriate for some things that's not appropriate, what types of mics should you use, um, stuff relating to like compression and EQing, what's appropriate to try to filter, what's not, 
um, principles more relating to like lighting and like now I, I now I understand like every setting in the camera and I can talk at length about like how they should work and like what makes sense and what doesn't like aperture shutter speed um, and your ISO your frame like I just I have a I just have a much better understanding of all of it now so now if there's like any problems with anything on the set from top to bottom I could troubleshoot every single thing in there um, and it's just good to know if I want to change anything or move anything or feel the type of way about a thing then yeah um, are you stopping the use of that annoying gate? Um, kind of. I mean, there's 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 kind of one right now with the compression. I think right now where it's at is fine. I, I think it sounds I think it sounds almost perfect right now. Um, is there a link to the last episode? Can I find this anywhere or who installed the mic arm? Stan did actually. He drilled into the table and yeah. You know. Did Albert help you? Or just researching it. Albert helped me set everything up. Um, but then I did, I just, I'll ask a lot of questions. When I've got somebody that's more informed than me in an area, I just start asking tons and tons and tons of questions. So I can absorb their fucking brain. I can mega man their fucking brain. So is your stream microphone better than the podcast mics? Um, but better. Once you get to like the 200 plus dollar range, I, that's very arbitrary. I just said that. But like once you get to like a certain, no, not even actually. Once you get to the $100 plus range of microphones for XLR mics, it's not really so much better. It's more that there's like things are appropriate for certain applications and things have certain strengths and things have certain weaknesses. Um, so whether or not a particular microphone is better or worse, it's really a matter of like taste and it's a matter of like application. So I think these SM7Bs, I think these are kind of like the industry default standard microphone because they give like, one is because it's a dynamic, highly directional mic, so it automatically filters a lot of background noise out because it's only in one area. Um, it's got a pretty warm profile, so your, your voices sound nice and rich and full um, without having to do a lot of tweaking. It is a built-in shock mount, so you don't have to like mount it and do crazy things because if you bang a table, table, like it's already you know like set up. They do need a lot of gain which is arguably a good thing because it helps to kill noise in the background maybe a little bit more. Um, give an example of an amazing microphone for $100. I mean, like, these are super standard, like an SM78 and, or 87? What am I thinking of? Oh, SM58. Um, this is like a really standard voice mic, like speaking microphone. This is probably an okay mic if you have this set up inside. Um, there's the, um, oh, fuck, I used to record with these. Um, SM58, oh, SM57. Yeah, this is like a good directional mic as well. I think th these are probably still, even without knowing, these are probably still like industry standard mics. Like I bet people use a ton of, they're just like solid microphones. Um, when it comes to shooting, I've noticed more and more, um, Destiny, 4K, 24 FPS, 148 shutter speed gives you that cinematic vibe. That's exactly what I have set up right now. Um, in degrees, I think it's oh, it's like 180 is what it's called or whatever. But yeah, the cameras now are doing a full 4K. Uh, they uh, output 24 frames per second, and my shutter speed is 148. Um, yeah. Um, when it comes to doing, here's, here's a typical life advice for everything, and this sucks. It sucks to hear this. It's either really good or really bad, depending on how you feel about it. Um, when it comes to playing music, when it comes to shooting pictures, when it comes to doing video or audio, your settings and environments matter a million times more, or individual skill matters a million times more than the equipment. If you give a $400 saxophone to a professional player and you have him play alongside a high school student, with a $3,000 saxophone, the $400 horn is gonna sound better because the professional's embouchure and control is so much better, it's not even close. Um, same thing when it comes to setting up like uh, cameras or microphones, right? Like you've seen people, yeah, you've seen on my stream, like you can have a whole $700 audio chain and if like your mic is set up like incorrectly or you're like too far back or your like settings are fucked or you're not like everything, like it'll just be fucking horrible, right? You can get a decent sound out of an, uh, a Blue Yeti, like a $100 microphone. And then same thing with like cameras and stuff, like for cameras and everything, your lighting and all that is gonna be way, 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 way more important. Um, this is such an amateur, it's amateur recording. It's an amateur recording and it's amateur playing. Everything about this is amateur, okay? But um, oh, there's so much I would change. But even for, um, no, it's not even a good example. But like, like, I'm pretty sure my saxophone is only being captured, I believe I'm literally only using an SM57 which I don't even know is appropriate, but the church that we're capturing in is so resonant. The church hall is so beautiful. And then I think I've got two 
condensers inside the piano, and that's probably why you're catching some of the background noise of the saxophone. The piano could be captured better though. Um, but like, this sounds like okay. I think, no, I would change so much of this. Uh, I would change so much of this. It's okay-ish. We could do, I could do that way better this. The church sounded really nice though. The profile of the room is, is just super, super good. Um, yeah. So if you're, if you're trying to like, if you want to get into photography or if you want to get into uh, video camera, audio, all this shit, you can do so much with so little, like the skill that you develop while working with this stuff is way more important than having good gear or good equipment. Like, I, I think if you took a professional photographer, um, and you gave them a phone today, they're going to capture better stuff than an amateur would on like a, like a $2,000 camera body with like a $2,000 lens. It's just so, yeah, the, the scale of the stuff is so important. <sighs> Key to cameras, always custom white balance. Make sure your shutter speed is double your FPS. Use as low ISO as possible and check your histogram. I don't even know what the histogram is. Um, for custom white balance, I think we just always have it set to 5,600. Um, one thing I'm not sure is, um, I don't know, I don't know why anybody would ever set a white balance under 56, or uh, that's not like just, 5600 5, because I feel like there are so many like you can adjust all of your bulbs now like everybody has LEDs it's not like I need to set at like 36 or 3200 in order to like adjust for some other bullshit because you can you've got temperature on everything now but I don't know maybe there are reasons to be able to do but whatever have you ever played an electronic wind instrument nope what are your thoughts about Kevl saying that she regrets building a bridge with you do your Israel takes I don't really care it's not like we had a strong bridge built anyway it's what we just like made up at a, an event once so fuck it Destiny saying only SM57 is misleading. It's easily one of the most popular mics in the world. Isn't that what I just said? I'm saying only because um, it's a it's a cheap microphone. It's like an eighty dollar microphone, right? Pro photography here, big facts. Better gear will give you more options and more leeway with mistakes, but without understanding how they work, better gear won't help you. Maybe yeah. Melina was really good at photography. I learned a decent amount, like being her little fucking Instagram boyfriend. Um, I don't know how to fucking. I don't know what her name is, or how to spell this last fucking name. Like, I'm pretty sure every single photo that she has on her Instagram... Ooh, wait, are these... No, it's Instagram. You can't get in trouble with this. I'm pretty sure every single photo that she has here, all of these are done with literally just an iPhone. Um, and for a lot of these, she's literally, like, setting it up herself. And she was really, really, really good at... Um, at angles, at framing, at, yeah, at, like, everything. Like, she's... I think she has a really good eye for her photography. Um, I tried to learn a little bit off of her, but it's, I don't, I don't have an eye for visual stuff at all. It's like so bad. I'm working on developing it more, but does the sun changing brightness in the window screw with any of the settings or do your settings change automatically too? Um, I think we're controlling for it. Okayly right now. I think. Hey, better to target, but wasn't the original thinking behind the podcast named Bridges to have more disagreeable slash controversial guests on the show? So far, basically, all the guests have been very agreeable thoughts. Uh, maybe we might in the future. Listen, I'm just rolling with it, seeing what happens, okay? Do you have an amp for your headphones? Uh, no, but they plug right into my mixer, so I don't think I need one. Feels like magic sometimes. Brother went to school for film and photography. Anytime he takes a picture of me on his phone, it looks 10 times better and I don't even get what he's doing. Yeah, it's just art is like art. You develop like very intuitive feels for art. Um, yeah, because like when we would go out somewhere and Melina was like, oh, I want a picture. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And she's like, no, 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 hold on. You stand in the street right here. Make sure that this is right here and then angle the camera like this for that. And then I'm like, yeah, they'd always look like, yeah, they'd look really, really good. I think that, yeah, some people, but it's like, that's the thing that you do. But she also does art, like she paints. So obviously she probably has a better eye for that then. The shots of you and Kylie yesterday were okay, but the background was blown out. Um, I don't know. I don't have a link to the show, so I don't know if I can look at it right now. I can also bump the ISO on that camera a bit and turn the brightness down on the lights above. I'll probably still tweak it a little bit, but it looks I think it looks pretty solid right now, and it sounds good, so. It didn't seem like you wanted to talk Israel-Palestine with Rugged Man. It seemed like he threw out there a couple times and you didn't bite on it. Yeah, because it wasn't... There's. It's just not inappropriate. I don't know what his background is for that, and I'm not. that's not my... That was not the focal point of that show, I don't think. Would you recommend using a mixer over a dedicated preamp? A dedicated preamp for, I don't that's a very broad question. It depends on your application, right? Would you watch a quick 10-ish minute debate between Charlie Kirk and a student? Uh, maybe, if you wanna shoot me a link to it, maybe. 
You got to get the pod on apps like this. It's what most people use. What is this? Pocket Cast. Is there a platform that people want it on that it's not on right now? I don't know. Or is it just another RSS hosting thing? Please move the lamp. It's so triggering blocking the shotgun. Oh, this one? Yeah, I get triggered. So I'm fixing the lighting in the studio, then worrying about the ISO. Well, the ISO, I think the ISO might be too low right now because it's at like 100 on almost every camera. I think the wide is set to 300. And somebody told me, I read this. I didn't know this was true. Somebody said the best picture quality is around 400 ISO. I don't know if that's right. I thought it was always supposed to be as low as possible. If you look at cloud lifters for SM7Bs, uh, the interface that I have is has so much gain on it. I don't need cloud lifters, but generally you do need a cloud lifter because those those mics are very hungry for gain. Have you talked about the civilian casualties being cut in half? Um, I've looked at it, but my understanding so far is that all of it traces back to that unaccounted for number or the unconfirmed number, and I'm not comfortable saying that those are all fake. So I'm just kind of waiting more. You want it at 400 because it's the base ISO. Oh, so 100 is like something unnatural is going on. Oh, I don't know what the base ISO of that camera is. Magic pocket camera 6K. Oh, black magic. I, I don't even know where I would find the base ISO of this camera. Has your iPad replaced your laptop entirely for productivity? Yes, I actually gave my laptop to Nathan. <laughs> I just, yeah. We'll see how long he can make without breaking that second screen. Um, yeah, it's just so good. The iPad is just such a great thing for me. But also, I don't game or anything on it, too. I'm just um, Lonerbox live, and their viewers just join and say hello. Oh, hi, Bonerbox. And then I'm buying this new one tomorrow. <sighs> the new, the next iPad. I don't even know if I was going to do anything different, but... You can get an ND filter to make it darker without changing the settings. Yeah, I know. I might. We might. We'll see. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What do you mean you don't game on your iPad? Do you know how many gacha games you could play? Shut the fuck up. I don't want to destroy my productivity. When I get a MacBook, I don't know. I feel like the iPad is just perfect. You're allowed to have it out during takeoff and landing, which is very convenient. It's like easy to carry around. Um, the um, uh, yeah. Oh, I like touching the screen. Oh my god, bro. Ask like fucking. Kyla or Dan, whenever I'm trying to use a laptop now, there are so many times where I just want to, I put my finger on the screen and just like try to move shit and I can't and it like drives me crazy. I am so used to just being able to like touch a screen and just move it is like so nice. Also, I can take notes. I don't know if that Gorka debate has come out yet, um, but I can just set my iPad down with a that magic pen. I can just take notes on it too and then wipe it so I don't need like notebooks or anything anymore as well, which is super convenient. Um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just really nice. Yeah, Jesus. Get a touchscreen laptop is better than an iPad. Um, at this point, my biggest thing for, uh, my biggest stuff for laptops that has traumatized me, there has been some technology that's gotten really good over the past 20 years that I'm like catching up on. And there's a lot of technology that still fucking sucks dick. Um, one of the Texas touchscreens, like, I, I don't know how to explain this to you. I'm 35. Touchscreens were just always dog shit when I was a kid. So using an iPad, an actual iPad for the first time, like a few months ago, was like, holy shit, this is actually really good. Like, it's not like doing random crazy shit. Like, that tech came along, like, really far. Um, for laptops, one of the things that I still don't like about laptops that I just haven't gotten over is I feel like I'm fighting way too much with whatever bloatware comes with it. It's one of the reasons why I'm so, like, poisoned against Samsung phones and I just like Pixels. Um, I just, fighting bloatware on really good hardware, actually, it hurts my soul. It damages my spirit. I incur severe levels of psychic damage when I'm interacting, when I'm fighting through uh, like, uh, like a whole dragon's worth of shitty firmware or shitty software uh, trying to utilize the, the underlying hardware of a device that I'm using. This is why I like the, I guess the iPad stuff. I guess it's kind of what Apple goes for, but yeah. And it's just with laptops, it's just too much. I, I've had too many problems with laptop software that just drives me crazy. Fuck that. What's your latest laptop's GPU bound to be integrated with the CPU's integrated GPU? I have no idea. Have you looked at the Microsoft Surface Pro? Nope. Do you 
Hear Sam Harris's solo podcast on the campus protest he released last night. Nope. Aren't you still associated with Progressive Victory? I don't know if you can remove the association with the Progressive Victory. Uh, maybe I might, I might chat with them and see what I want to do. I'm not sure. Um, I still want to help like with general election stuff. Progressive Victory is an awesome company, but um, man, I'm like, I'm just taking a big step back from any place that call, any space that calls itself progressive. I think that they need like serious reformation and not, not enough people in those movements are like holding them accountable and it's driving me crazy. Why do you jizz your pants for an iPad, but not the iPhone? Um, two things on the iPhone, and I notice this because I still go back to my Pixel every now and then, although I'm using my iPhone now as my daily driver basically constantly. I don't even take my Pixel with me anymore. But um, I, I think that the keyboard on the Pixel is just way better. I, I don't like texting or typing on the iPhone. I don't think it's a good experience um, compared to the Pixel. I think the Pixel is way better. And I also still don't like the notifications on the iPhone. I don't like that you can't archive texts. I don't like that when I set an alarm, uh, it doesn't like tell me like how many hours till I wake up. There's still a lot of nice things. I still think I like the Pixel more than the iPhone. I'm just using the iPhone now because now I'm locked into their fucking walled garden. You can download the Google keyboard on the iPhone. I know, I got it. But it doesn't auto-suggest emotes, which sucks because I need to use my flirty emotes all the time. And um, it, the typing feel, I don't know how to explain it. The typing on the Pixel, I feel like I can type better on the Pixel than I can on the iPhone. I just can't. What laptop are you using? Is it still the Zephyrus? I had that one and I gave it to Nathan. Now I have my iPad. Might be cool to reach out to George Tyrus Murdoch. Okay, I don't want your suggestions. Fuck off. I don't need this right now. <laughs> Do you know that you can use an iPad as an extended display for a modern MacBook? Uh, maybe. Um, I remember you used to always complain about trying to be productive on one screen when traveling. That was just because of streaming stuff. I can be productive on one screen, just but not while streaming. I will try to stream. I have to stream a little bit in Israel. Maybe I'll do like a 30 to 60 minute recap at the end of the day on my phone because I can't not stream for like two weeks. All of you guys will forget me.